Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Outer Diagnostics. Hey, we have another beached whale here on the lawn, kind of where the Saturn Astra from Hell was. Kind of a similar scenario. So this car, almost nothing works. The customer complaint was something to do with a security system, and he said that he wants the keys reprogrammed. So he offered to drive to him, but he's like, no, nah, I'm just going to tow it here. You can deal with it. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's a little more than just a security system issue. But I told him I need two keys just in case we have to deal with that. So he brought me two keys for this 2009 Ford uh, Focus 2 liter four cylinder. And, well, not much works on here. The only thing that does work is the door locks. Okay and then the parking lights and a dinger see parking lights come on there and the front when you try and turn the headlights on nothing happens no action Dome lights work, they're a little dim, so the battery voltage might be really low. And when you turn the key, turn it to, you know, accessory, got no radio, clock is up there, turn the key to on, absolutely nothing happens. Obviously it's no crank, no fan, no HVAC. So, What's the, uh, the logical approach here? It's going to be something, you know, global power and ground issue here for sure. And I'm going to try to diagnose this car with just what's in this bag right here and a subscription to all data with a laptop. We need information. So let's start by throwing a voltmeter on the battery. Let's see if it has, you know, proper voltage. If we need to, we can uh, charge it up. And then go from there. All right, we got 9.6 volts. That's way too low. Let's throw, first try a jump pack, see if anything changes. Uh, and then, you know, if we still can't get it started right away, I'll hook up my jumper cables and just charge it from uh, my work truck here. All right, we got the, uh, the Audu hooked up. Now that little light should say correct. 85% positive, negative. Okay, we got 15 volts. Let's see if anything changes here when we turn the key. Nope, <laughs> nothing. No crank. So our headlights do work now. Okay. But the radio doesn't work, HVAC doesn't work. Horn works. Power windows do not work. So not much change, but the headlights did come on because now the battery voltage is up. I'm gonna hook up some jumper cables and get this battery charged up, and meanwhile, look up some uh, power distribution diagrams. All right, so I got old school battery charger hooked up on the maximum setting. Right now we're at 13.2 volts and how much current is this battery accepting? Is this battery completely junk? Uh, about 10 amps. You might wake up <laughs> but it was completely dead and it's only accepting 10 amps so we'll let it simmer a little bit. Let's look up some diagrams. So, since nothing happens, when I turn the key, the logical thing to do is find the diagram of the ignition key. And here are all the 15 power distribution diagrams. Diagram number five, here's the ignition switch. So how it works is, we have, I guess, a constant power here, 
hot at all times, fuse 27, 20 amp, going to the ignition switch, and then, depending on what position you're in, you'll get voltage on, you know, position 1, 2, or 3. So that's accessory, on, and start. So right away, let's check fuse 27, 20 amp in the smart junction box just to verify that we have power there. It should be hot at all times. Time for the test light. So we're just using what's in this <laughs> little toolkit. All right, going after our smart junction box, test light is hooked up to a power probe adapter. And interesting to note that we do have power at the cigarette lighter socket. And the test light works, so if this finds the power, it'll light up. So we're going after fuse 27, 20 amp. The little fuse box lives right here. And fuse 27 is gonna be right here. So up there, a 20 amp fuse that's vertical. Let's, uh, let's touch it, see what happens. So that side's hot. That side is not. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So that fuse is definitely blown. Let's, uh, let's pull it out and install a five amp bright test light in there. See what, see why it blew. Yep, that's definitely blown. So, to all the guys say, don't, you know, just check fuses first. Well, this was much faster. We, the first fuse we checked was the right one. Why? Because the thought process says, ignition switch, nothing happens. Let's check the feed to the ignition switch. It goes through a fuse, boom. So we're right on the right track. Now what blew the fuse? That's probably gonna be the interesting part. But checking all the fuses right away I mean, go ahead, waste your time, but that's not the most efficient diagnostic process. Okay, so 5 amp test light plugged in in place of the 20 amp fuse. Now, what do we expect? If the current flow is, you know, a few amps, the test light will light up dimly. If there's a short to ground, they will light up bright. Okay, so key in reminder came back to life. Accessory position, our radio came back to life, forward focus, okay, let's turn the key to the second position, our test lights are still not lit, okay, so, hey, our dashboard's back, we're still good, our HVAC system is back to life, okay, now what happens when we try to start this thing? We're definitely neutral. Let's turn the key to start, see what happens. Nothing, test lights are still not lit. And clutch in. Okay, so no, it's still a no crank, but we're uh, at least found one blown fuse. So now let's look up what it takes to crank this thing. Now am I using, there's two keys, one original key and one old key. Let's turn that off. Make sure our power windows work. They do. Very good. So next, let's look up the diagram for the starting system circuit. We could also plug in a scanner and see if we can talk to this thing, you know, clear the code, see if the security system is uh, malfunctioning, but the light's not blinking, so let's try the new key that's not programmed. See, security light is blinking, so so if the key is appropriate here. I heard the fuel pump prime. So 
So still no crank. Awesome. Okay, so here's the diagram for the starting circuit on this manual transmission focus. Starter relays integrated into the battery junction box. And the powertrain control module is in charge of turning on that relay. It also looks at the clutch cutoff switch right here and receives the start input from the ignition switch right here. So this line is energized when you turn the key to start. Okay, goes through a diode. So both of these are energized and start. And <clears throat> the smart junction box also sees that start input. So before plugging in the scanner, looking at our power distribution diagram, so this wire is hot and start. It goes to 13.3, which is right here. Energizes this whole blue tree. And I see fuse F28 5 amp. That should be hot and start. So we can at least check when we turn the key, is that fuse energized to verify that our ignition switch works. And then we can plug in the scanner. Okay, so fuse 28 is right next to fuse 27. It's a 5 amp. And make sure our test light still works. It does. Let's set it up right here. So I'm going to touch it on fuse five, or, uh, 28 through this little hole. Okay, turn the key to start. Yes, we do have a test light and start. And check both sides of that fuse. Very good. So our ignition switch works. Now, we can either go to the starter relay. Actually, it is. it should be serviceable, you know, a separate relay here. And see if... Pin 3 is hot at all times. You can see that comes right from the battery. And if pin 2 is energized when you turn the key to start. Okay, so under fuse and relay information, battery junction box, the starter relay is going to be this one right here. Let's see if we can locate it. So right there, looks like this one right here. So pull it out. Okay, it's a five pin. No, it's a four pin relay. Very easy. Control pins are the skinny ones. And the uh, fat ones are the load side going right to the starter. So let's get a test light, put it on there. Oh, we have to be careful. <laughs> this fuse box is kind of symmetrical. The starter relay is actually closer to, see there's the one touch diode. There's the diode right here. Then there's a little group of these small relays and the starter relay would actually be So it's upper right, so it's being lower left. So it's actually this one right here. So we pulled the wrong relay out. Oops. It's gonna be this one. Okay, so now let's do our checks right here. Test light. Yes, we do have a constant power on the load side. So that's one pin. And the other pins, this one goes to the starter solenoid, so we can jump those two, see if it cranks. And then these are the control pins. So we can either do a bypass check right now, or just leave our test light in here and see if in the crank position with the clutch depressed, we don't see a light on that pin. Yep, 
yes, we do see a light on that pin. So that's, that shows, back to our wiring diagram. What did we just prove? So on the starter relay, our ignition switch is good, this blue tree is lighting up, and we get power to the control side of the starter relay, but the PCM is not pulling it down. We can prove that. Test light to battery positive. If the test light finds a ground, it will light up. So on this pin, the computer should pull that pin down if everything's good to start. So clutch switch. Okay, so the computer is not happy about something. So now is where the scanner comes out. We have to look at the inputs, like the clutch, you know, pedal switch, and see if we can even do a bypass check from the scanner to energize that relay. But we're missing the control now uh, on the starter relay to the PCM. So this wire is not being pulled to ground. So the car is in neutral, parking brake is set. Let's just jump the two control pins, see if the starter spins. It should fire up. I don't see any reason it wouldn't. So that pin to this pin. There you go. And yes, I checked that it does have some engine oil in it. Probably hasn't run in months. Okay, so now all, all we're worried about now, car starts, runs, and there's no security problem with the original key. Let's see why the PCM is not happy not pulling down that uh, starter relay. And by the way, the test lights never uh, lit up, so there isn't much current going through at 20 amp fuse. Uh, not sure why it blew. All right, got the Think Tool Pros correctly identified the vehicle. So let's get in here and do a full system health check. Smart scan. All right, only took a few seconds. That is one red tree. Let's do a report pre repair. And see what we have battery voltage low, battery voltage low, battery voltage low. Ignition stuck in start, ignition failure. Okay. Lower motor relay, battery voltage is low. A certain time since the last ignition is switched without any key code being read. Missing communication with PCM. All right, so let's just clear all this crap out. Okay, PCM. OBD systems readiness incomplete. Go right in here. Now I want to see that clutch switch input in the live data stream. So, so far we've been pretty efficient. Let's just uh, accelerate our pedal position, percent. Brake pedal position, brake pressure applied, clutch pedal at or near bottom of travel, clutch pedal beyond top of travel switch point, interesting.
Desired speed. Engine RPM. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm interested in something to do with starting, <clears throat> like starter relay energize. One touch start status. Not sure what that is. Starter motor control output detected. Starter motor relay enable. All right. So brake pedal. That works. Accelerator pedal. That works. Clutch pedal. Beyond top of travel switch point and clutch pedal at or near bottom of travel. That always says no. So when you start pushing the clutch, it says yes, but that always says no. That's a problem. Starter motor relay enable says forbid. Let me try to crank it. It says forbid. So that data pit right there. Let's see what this clutch pedal switch represents. Ugh. I can manually push it. It's just this little, when you push the clutch pedal, there's a switch there, and I assume there's another switch. Because how does it know the second data pit? So there should be two separate buttons on this clutch pedal. But I'm gonna push this button right here. It always says clutch pedal at bottom or near bottom of travel, no. Uh-huh. Okay, very interesting. So, that switch there is not doing anything at all. Let's unplug it. We can short those two wires out. So on the diagram, this clutch cutoff switch is dark or blue orange and black and violet. Is it the right one? Blue, orange, black, and violet. Yep. So let's uh, short those two pins out. We can use a test light and see if that data pit changes. Gotta love the bypass test. All right. So the two pins, if I short them together, boom, clutch pedal at or near bottom of travel. So now in neutral, this thing, if we pop the relay back in, should fire right up. So without a scanner, actually, I guess you could do a voltage measurement on there, but this makes it so much easier. So we don't need to push the clutch pedal right now, it'll just start right up. <laughs> That's it, this car is fixed, so it either needs a new clutch pedal switch or an adjustment. One well, needs a new switch because I pushed it all the way in and that data pit didn't change. Or we can take it apart and see what's going on inside. So here's a clutch pedal switch. If I push the button, the data pit does not change at all. So indeed, something is up with this thing. Let's, uh, let's pop it apart. I think you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. Use the pick from our little tool bag and there's the uh, the contacts in there so it's these bottom two yeah, look a little oxidized and crappy but hey can we just flip this thing around and pop it in this way. This would be the most beautiful. No parts required to repair. Like so. There we go. So when it's all the way 
out, it's not touching the contacts. I bet that's all this car needs to be fully functional again. Boom. Plug it back in. Look at our scan data. Look at that data PID. And yay. <laughs> oh, I love it. <clears throat> this thing can last for another 10 years without buying any parts. How beautiful is that? So we just uh, pop it back on here. Clip. Now when we push the clutch pedal in, that data pitch should say, yes, yes, final verification of repair. So I'll, tr I'll hold the key in the crank position and victory. So now let's, uh, I still haven't seen those test lights light up at all, so there isn't much current going through the ignition switch circuit. And if there isn't, then there's no short to ground anywhere. It's probably user error. Lights on. Let's see, wipers. Everything works. I think that's it. Let's replace that fuse. Call this car fixed. Once again, no parts required, but man, this, this thing has been sitting for months, the guy said, and he was all over the place with it. Most excellent. Brand new 20 amp fuse in the top. Pop this little cover back on here. Put his dash back together. <clears throat> Compared to the Mercury Mystique, this is some cheap plastic interior in here. And the shifter is like clunky and wobbly. <laughs> oh, by the way, it only has 102,000 miles. I can write that down. 103,000 miles. Just verify that everything works. And start. Sweet. See if his AC works. Disconnect our charger. Turn that off. Verify charging system voltage. 14.3, and how many amps are going into this battery? Well, we've got two cables. Nothing on that one. Oh. Push the hold button. About six amps. Okay, so it's charging at about six amps. And we can do a battery health check by letting it run for a bit, then leaving the lights on for 10 minutes. Watching our voltage here. Awesome. So what do we learn? You can diagnose almost any car with a little bag of carefully selected tools. Mostly test lights, voltmeter, a little fuse jumper, some probes. But the most important thing is the information and using your head. Logical thought process, 
first fuse we checked, boom, blown. That was it. Don't know why it blew, but you know, if they're trying to mess with the starter relay and shorted that out and then crank the key, uh, easily could have done that. Uh, and then the original problem why it didn't crank was a bad clutch pedal switch. And that was the coolest no parts required repair. Just flip the contacts around, good for another 10 years. Uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. All right, a little bonus footage. Uh, the customer wants me to program the second key to the car so you can use it. Let's see if the Think Tool Pros can handle this. So, key on. Let's turn that off. So, let's go back. And right here, we have this screen. You go to Special Functions, Body, Security. Pat's anti-theft system functions, control function, instrument cluster, maximum number of keys, eight, minimum keys required after ignition key erase, two, requires parameter reset after installation of a new PCM or Pat's anti-theft module, okay, turn on ignition, it's on, okay, this procedure will take 10 minutes, do you want to continue, yes, and We'll wait for 10 minutes uh, with this countdown timer. And we can monitor our battery voltage there. It's showing 12.7, 12.5. So 10 minutes and we'll be right back. All right, after 10 minutes, security access granted. And all we want to do is uh, program an additional ignition key. I mean, you could you could do all kinds of stuff in here. Well, we'll go we'll go the easy way. Place an unprogrammed Pat's anti-theft key into the ignition. Turn to the on position. So this is unprogrammed. The new one. On position. Okay. And successfully performed. Do you want to program another key? No. Do you want to return to the Pat's function menu? Sure. We'll back out of here. Hey, everything's back. So key off. And new key in. Security lights out. Weed O Rama. All right. Well, I'm gonna take this car for a little shakedown spin, and then uh, that should be it. So thanks a lot for watching. Think Tool Pros. They're on sale. Get one. They can do pretty much everything. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, a little more bonus footage. Car starts, runs, drives, awesome, right? Check all the electrical accessories. Everything works except for the turn signals. How random is that? Brake lights work, headlights work, AC works, wipers, windows, all the good stuff. Radio works, turn signals, nothing. And this button is like, I don't know if that's supposed to be that way. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna call the customer, uh, give him the bill so far, and ask him if he wants me to, you know, do the turn signal diagnosis. So, question for you guys is, and girls, how would you charge for this case study? Well, uh, one hour for no power to anything and then you know we found the blown fuse check for short to ground restored that and then it was a no crank separate issue 
with the uh, clutch pedal switch. Now for that, I would add half an hour, so total one and a half hour diag, plus a key programming charge. So basically three three separate procedures there. Now I know some some people are going to say, well, they, they just bought brought the car to you. It was a no crank. It's all one issue. Uh uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> you got to charge per issue, even though obviously the car didn't crank when the fuse is blown. There's a separate issue there. That was the original, I guess, customer complaint, but someone built in the blown fuse problem. So we had to look up more diagrams, do a little more research, get the scanner out. It takes extra time. You got to charge for it. Can't work for free, especially when you're guaranteeing the result. Um, you know, customer satisfaction is, of course, the priority here. Um, but you got to be straightforward. So let me see if they want to fix the turn signals. If not, we'll see you next time. So customer said go ahead and fix the turn signals. Well, wiring diagram for the turn signal system. So again, smart junction box controls everything here. It's kind of like the tip of my Chrysler's, I guess. There's your multifunction switch, so it just grounds out these wires to indicate what you want to do. And then the actual output are these transistors and they turn on your actual bulbs. They're all driven off of this fuse F6 20 amp. That's the first thing I'm going to check in the smart junction box. Alright, so fuse 6 is 6 to 1 up on the right side. 20 amp fuse. There it is, hot at all times. Hot there, and it's hot there. Okay, so now it's time for the scanner to see what this smart junction box is thinking. Let's plug that back in. Reconnect. All right, let's jump into our smart junction box. Enter, and see if it's receiving signals from our turn signal switch. Data stream. We can also do actuation test. Okay, here we go. Hazard flasher switch. Left turn signal. Left front turn signal. Assuming there's a right, front, right rear, turn signal switch input status. Okay, so hazard switch, I'm going to press that down. Seeing not pressed. Okay, uh, turn on the left turn signal. It says off. Right turn signal, off. Let's see, high beams. Ah, the high beam indicator doesn't work, so it looks like the wipers work, but that's about it. Otherwise, this whole stock is disabled. Let's see, was there a high beam, headlamp switch, status, okay, so headlamp switch is on, now it's off, park, headlamps, high beam, there the input status of the high beam. No bueno. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So we got some info now. And we can do an actuation test. Let's do high beam. Okay. Let's do on. 
Yep, our high beam indicator turned on. So that's good. And off. Excellent. Now let's do left turn signal. On. Let's do left front. Left front. Okay, you actually you actually saw the uh, the blink there. Yes, indeed, this is on. So that all works, the outputs work. We're worried about the inputs. Why is the smart junction box not seeing inputs from the actual switch? Back to the wiring diagram. Okay, so we're on the multifunction switch, connector C202. Obviously, we want to check this black and violet ground on pin eight. Interesting to note that for the windshield wipers, same switch, but the ground is on pin 15 C202, same ground location. So I doubt it's going to be a bad ground, but we can we can verify. So test light from battery positive, and if our probe finds a ground. Like right here, test light is going to light up. So we'll come up here to our switch. Here I have it unplugged. And the first black and violet pin, yes, we have a good ground. The second black and violet pin, yes, we have a good ground. Now let's try being the switch. And for example, if you want to turn on your hazards, you want to ground out this pin one brown and yellow momentarily. Here's our probe. Here's our brown and yellow wire. You ground it out momentarily. Hazards are on. Ground out again. No problems. Turns off. Um, that's all I wanted to do. So the switch itself is busted. <laughs> Connector is good, wiring's good. Needs a new multifunction switch, or we can always take it apart. It looks like it comes apart and see why these buttons are not grounding these traces. And again, we'll that's the diagnosis. Bad multifunction switch. If the customer wants us to try to repair it. That's going to be more work. You got to take it apart, blah, 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 blah. So, um, again, you have to be straightforward. You know, charge them an extra, whatever, half an hour to diagnose his turn signals on this high beam. Say, replace your multifunction switch. That's it. That's the diagnosis. If he wants to save some money, you could say, well, we could try to take it apart. It shouldn't be that complicated inside and see what's missing. It looks like it's a bad ground trace through the switch for all the you know the turn signals and the high beam and the hazard switch so just by the symptoms you can narrow down the problem even component level pretty uh, pretty far um, hope you enjoy the bonus footage and we'll see you next time bye bye oh 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 it's magic looks like there was just a problem in the ground pin at that connector We spray a little deoxid on there. It all works now. I don't see any anything wrong with those pins. Or just leave it like that. This car's fixed.